All right, guys, we're in the early end game, and we finally, finally, finally brought us the Hoda build. You guys all know about Hoda, and I'm sure it's all over YouTube and the internet as one of the strongest barbarian builds in the game. And as you can see, it still absolutely slaps, and it's still one of the crowd favorites as well as my favorite or one of the best okay so this build relies on triple shouting and stunning enemies to slam our hammer into the ground dealing massive amounts of damage to a huge mob of monsters this build is really really cool so today we're going to get into the build how to play it, all the skills the paragon and everything you need to play the build let's get right into it Okay, guys, we're back with Hoda, and I just want to say this build is insanely fast. You move really, really quick. You have incredible amounts of stun as well as just smashing everybody in the face with your hammer. So we're going to go over all the skills and everything that you need as well as the Paragon board. So let's get right into it. So starting off, guys, of course, with Hoda. I know a lot of people already know this, and I think we've there's builds all over the place, but we had to bring it in here after you know season one with all the nerfs and the big changes to the Hoda power. And I still want to preface that this build is insanely strong still. You're still doing millions and millions of damage, and the build is just fine. Even though we're not doing trillions, it's just fine. So starting off, we're doing two points into Lunging Strike, Lunging Point, uh, Lunging Strike into Enhanced Lunging Strike. This could literally just be whatever. I actually really want to test using Flay because of a power, but we'll talk about that later. So two points into there, and then, of course, we're coming down to Max Out Hammering Ancients into Ferocious Hammer of the Ancients because 1% times additional damage for each point of fury you have when you smash with it makes it even more strong. Even more strong? Even stronger. Okay, now we're going to come down. This is where we're going to take almost every defensive ability that we can. We're starting off with taking Rallying Cry into Tactical Rallying Cry for the initial Fury and Fury Regen. Now, I know with a lot of my builds, guys, we do have all the shouts, but don't worry. We still have more builds coming that aren't going to rely on triple shouts. So if you guys aren't big triple shout fans for the Barbarian, don't worry. We got more coming. So then we come down to Challenging Shot, which is our best shout as far as debuffing the enemy and giving us Fury back. I know Rallying Cry is really, really good, but this is overall our best shout, and we want this to go non-stop. So we got the damage reduction there into the Fury Regen, which is awesome. Then we're taking only one point into Ground Stomp. We don't need anything else. You can maybe sacrifice one more point, like take a point off of Challenging Shot and put it into Enhanced just to make this the stun last even longer. But to be honest, the initial stun for four seconds or three seconds, excuse me, is already good enough because we're going to smash them down and deal and just to, you know, kill them anyway. So it doesn't matter. But we have Ground Stomp for large mobs to stun them and then just destroy them. Only one point there. Then we're going to come down and we're taking War Cry into Power War Cry. As long as there's six enemies, we get a huge damage buff as well as being able to Berserk. This is our main Berserking ability, okay? Later in the super, super end game, we're going to end up running Wrath of the Berserker, I believe, and swapping out one of these shouts. But until we get there, watch out for that guide, guys, coming soon. Then uh, we're going to come down and we're going to take all the points in Booming Shot for uh, increased duration. Three points in a gutter all yell for the damage reduction, which is really good. And only one point in a raid leader. I know I get a lot of uh, controversy about this because of how powerful raid leader is. But I think right now what you could do is maybe do this to kind of even it out. That's fine. Or just the three points for the damage reduction is really good. Three points into swiftness for increased move speed because we want to be very, very fast in this build. This on top of Warcry uh, with Berserking and then on top of the Rallying Cry movement speed boost, we run... From mob to mob, smashing and just going about our business. It's really, really good. One point into aggressive resistance for damage reduc reduction while berserking. And then fury regen while damage reduc or while we're berserking is increased by 18%. Then we're going to come down to weapon mastery. We got three points in pit fighter for increased damage up close. And then no mercy. Increased crit chance against immobilized, stunned, or slowed. So we're really prefacing stunning enemies. And this is why I kind of want to look at some other ways. Introducing flay to use hamstring. And just have a way to slow them to increase this critical strike as well as really help proc our stun. Then we're going to come down and grab thick skin for more fortify. And then, of course, counter offensive. While we're fortified over 50% of our max life, we deal 12 times multipl multiplicative damage. Our fortify is always going to be up because of a few things. Next, we're going to come down to ultimates. Zero of them for now. Three points into heavy handed because we're using a mace uh, for more damage. More uh, max out wall up here for increased damage against vulnerable or stun. This is always going to be on. And then we have three points of concussion to really help increase the chances of us stunning our enemies with lucky hit. Then, of course, our key passive is going to be in bridal race for just even more damage. Okay, into the gear. 
Now, I've moved some gear pieces around, and we have some extra gear pieces here from some of our other builds, but there's a few things. We're going to go over all of it, and then there's a few things that I really want to talk about. So initially, we have Audacity here. I think this is probably one of the best ones to have. When there's a mob around of five or more enemies, we stun them. This is huge because our build really does its most millions of damage when an enemy is stunned. So very, very good here. Next, we have a Numbing Wrath in our chest piece. This is one way we get Fortify. Each point of Fury generated while at maximum Fury gives us Fortify. I know it's a small amount, but it adds up over time as we're increasing our Fortify. In our gloves, we have our Hammer of the Ancients, Quakes Outwards. And I know before you go crazy, why isn't this on a two-handed? We don't actually need it. We got some other powers that are pretty good. However, if you want this on a two-handed weapon, you could definitely do that. In our pants, we got Disobedience. Very good for armor. In our boots, we're doing uh, Ghost Walkers for the while we're unstoppable, we get increased move speed because we want to be as fast as possible in this build as well as the unstoppable, which is just even better. In our two hand, we're doing Limitless Rage. Okay, maxed out Limitless Rage. Each point of fury we generate while at max fury increases our core skill up to 60%, which is just insane, okay? You could put this on like one of your one-handeds or your gloves and maybe swap these two. You could test them out. But with the recent change to how a Hammer of the Ancient quakes outwards and how that effect or, or sequence actually works, I don't think you need the actual the extra damage from that actual power. So I think having Limitless Rage here is just better. Then we have a hammer instead of two swords, one with expectant. The more basic attack that we use increases our core skill. And then we have a rapid on our blade for basic attacks, get increased attack speed, which is really good to help build up our expectant. So when we smash, going from mob to mob, it deals the most amount of damage. In our two-handed sword, we're taking retribution. We deal 40% uh, times more damage against enemies that are stunned. Very, very important. And then our, in our amulet, we got edge masters. While we're smashing at max fury, we deal 30% increased damage, which is just insane. And then our rings are two uh, resource regenerating rings. Bold's Chieftain for uh, shout cooldown, as well as Band of Echoing Fury for generate uh, fury while our shouts are active. Now, I do want to preface that these builds and our stat priorities are going to be focusing on max fury and resource regeneration. We want to get that resource back as fast as possible. And the more max fury that we have, the more damage we do when we actually do Hammer of the Ancients. Currently, I have 167 Fury. It can definitely always be higher than that. So, now I'm going to showcase the build just a little bit, as you guys have already seen, uh, that we do. And then we're going to talk about the Paragon Board because of our double swing build that we recently did. The Paragon Board shifts slightly, but not very much. So, let's showcase. We're going to pop our shouts, increase our, our skills here, stun some stuff, and then just do a lot of damage. It's really great. Stun. Destroy everything guys the build is is just very very simple. It's not a hard build to play It's very beginner friendly. It's very Even experience friendly and you just get a lot of satisfaction from just smashing Okay Now the one thing here that I will say as you guys just saw we the hammer of the ancients build actually doesn't suffer too much from uh, fighting elites or monsters that are unstoppable so I want to go in and just talk about a few um, powers that you could possibly swap out that I think that might make this build slightly better, which we're going to test live on stream here in YouTube. Okay. So one big power that I always talk about is smiting. Okay. Having the increased crit strike chance is very good against injured enemies. If we haven't already killed them. And then while we're healthy, we get the increased crowd control duration, which is good for stun. Okay. The, the other big ones here is like, there's one that is where we on a lucky hit we de we have a chance to stun a bleeding enemy so that's why i'm kind of using our lunging strike here with both of our two handed or our dual wielding because I, I would honestly love to try using i would love to try using flay and seeing how flay would hold up in here as a ability as a generator because with flay with flay you swing outwards and you're in a slashing motion so you're hitting multiple enemies which will cause the bleed on our ability we would cause the bleed which is really important and then what it would allow to do is on that power on a lucky hit we would increase our chances to stun our enemies because we would be using bludgeoning weapons so on this what you would do is you would take dual wield and then when you're swinging 
we would have a chance because we're using our hammer to proc the lucky hit to be able to stun our enemies with concussion right here. It would really help with that chest power. I believe it's a chest power that I have where you have a chance when dealing damage to a bleeding enemy to stun them, which would just really trigger it out because lunging strike is really just a placeholder. So I think maybe flay might be a really, really strong power to put in here. And then what you could do is just drop numbing wrath because we're going to hop into the Paragon board. I'm going to show you why we could possibly drop Numbing Wrath. The main thing is going to be Warbringer. For every 75 Fury that you spend, you gave 12% of your max Fury, which is 714 as Fortify. So ha Hammer of the Ancients costs 52. We only have to swing it twice, and we already get that. And with how fast our Fury regenerates, we're going to be able to smash even more, which is going to give us our over 50% uh, max Fortify and do our 12 times multiplicative increase in damage. So let's get into the Paragon board so you guys can see it. You guys are going to see that it does look a little familiar here. Um, there are going to be some suggestions that I'm going to suggest to you during the change. Okay, so again, we're going to come up to the right side. We're taking Brawn. Now, it's not going to look... At, it's going to look pretty close to the same as in my double swing build because we're still prefacing stun and using bludgeoning weapons over slashing weapons. So our bleed builds and those things and even walking arsenal is probably going to be a lot different. But we're going to grab Brawn for physical damage and max life. Exploit. This is our main source of vulnerability. Iron strength for armor and strength. Uh, physical damage with raw power and strength in all, all corresponding nodes. In our next board, we're taking Weapon Master. And we're going to come up and grab Hunter Killer for damage elites and increased movement speed after killing them. Because we want to be really fast. Raw power again for physical damage and strength. Then we're taking Marshall for our shout cooldown, which is very, very important. Then we're grabbing Iron Strength for more uh, armor and strength. Into our third board, as you guys already know, it's Warbringer. And we're going to come up and we're going to take Territorial again. Now, this option could be swapped out for something else. If you don't want to do... If you do not want to do Territorial because we're really focusing on just doing big damage, what you could do is put Wrath in here for the crit strike damage. And then that also helps you get Fury back. However, I thoroughly, thoroughly love Territorial over this for just the more consistent damage. Uh, raw power again for physical strength or physical damage and strength with all corresponding nodes. Then we come over and we're going to take Hungering Fury with all corresponding nodes for increased max fury and fury on kill. Very important. And then of course Warbringer. In our fourth board in the early end game, since this is an early end game build, we're taking Decimator, which actually might be really good, although we're not using slashing weapons. We're going to be taking Imbider here for the while we're healthy, we deal even more damage, which is the reason why my attack power is so high. And we're going to be taking Demolish for the increase in vulnerability. We'll eventually get the, the, the bonus here to 20% and the corresponding nodes. And then we're taking Arrogance for damage reduction against vulnerable with corresponding nodes. Then we're coming up here. We're almost done. We're going to grab both of these for the increased uh, vulnerable damage. But we have Pillage for more vul vulnerable damage in armor. Okay, so now if you didn't want to run Imbider, another really strong one here would be, um, which is why I'm thinking about introducing the Bleeding Effect. Because we could take that off because we're going to be doing so much damage anyway. The damage over time wouldn't really apply here. But killing the bleeding enemies would give us uh, some nice cooldown reduction. Another really strong option if you do not want to run and biter is... Uh, where is it? Undaunted is a very strong one. You deal increased damage while you are fortified, which is very strong. And get damage reduction while we're fortified. We're always going to have this. A lot of these glyphs are going to be probably in the entire board. But I just kind of want to introduce them now to show you guys which ones you could actually take. If you wanted to maybe swap them out early on. Another really strong one is Crusher. For increased damage while wielding a mace is very strong. And then we get increased 30% times damage for overpowering. Which is can happen on our build. And then we can also take uh, Might here for the increased uh, Glyph or the Magic Nodes increase, increase bonus, as well as the 8% damage increase while using two-handed weapons. That 8% would end up buffing these really good to give us some really strong damage reduction and then even more vulnerable damage. So you do have a lot of options here. My initial one is always going to be embroidered because we want to be healthy all the time. Helps us stay alive. So that is the build, guys, and our expertise is always going to be two-handed weapons here. If you really wanted to, you could drop the vulnerable increased damage here and maybe do bleeding, which would kind of help. And then we could take uh, the hamstring for the slow effect. But 
Uh, I, vul the vulnerable damage is just too much with exploit to be able to make them vulnerable and take in dealing too much damage. So, guys, that is my early end game hold to build. I hope you guys really do enjoy it. I'm going to be testing out all those little other things that I mentioned. So, be on the lookout for that. Um, that'll be coming soon. We're going to be testing it live on stream, so we're going to see if it works. But like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe if you guys are new. And join us over on YouTube live. We stream every or five days a week on YouTube. And really join the community. It's an awesome place over there. So join me out there. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.